Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Yours truly here, Macon. Listen, you've decided to save a little money, let your creative juices flow, and you've created this beautiful, large DIY canvas art. Okay, you wanna hang it up on the wall now. Yeah, of course you could just hang the canvas on the wall, but it would look a lot more finished and polished if you get it framed. So what do you do? Do you go to a framers and pay an exorbitant amount of money to get it framed? No, no, no. I'm gonna show you here to make a very budget-friendly, easy floating frame for any large piece of canvas art. You're only gonna need some pieces of wood at least four centimeters wide, and the thickness can be to your choice, depending on how much wood you wanna show around the, um, the artwork. One frame I made with two centimeter thickness and another one I made with one centimeter thickness. Now, the size of the wood pieces I'm gonna to get to later in the video. You're also gonna need another strip of wood that's at least three to four centimeters wide, but only one centimeter thick. You're gonna need some right angle metal brackets like these to secure your corners. You're also gonna need this flexible metal strip it comes in a roll like this, and it's easy to cut with utility scissors. You're not gonna need a miter saw or any other heavy, you know, working tools. You're just gonna need a screwdriver, a hand saw, some wood screws, some paint, or stain of your choice. Let's get started. Okay guys, now we're gonna build a custom frame for my painting. I bought two centimeter by four centimeter boards, wood pieces. We've cut them down to the dimensions of the um, painting. Painting is 120 by 140. The inside, to give just a little bit of room to get the canvas in there, I had them cut 121 by 141 is the measurement, but because they're overlapping here, I, of course I could have done the complicated version that I cut everything at 45 degree angle, but I think this is gonna work fine because we're gonna stain the wood. You won't be able to see that. So of course you have to have the wood cut two centimeters, or the mine is two centimeters, but the amount of width that you have on each board so they can meet and you still get the dimensions you want on the inside. Jumping back in here really quick, just to make sure you understand the length of the wood pieces you need. You want the inside measurement to be the same. I would allow a half to a centimeter more just so the canvas can fit in there. Okay, so the inside measurement needs to be one centimeter larger than each side of your canvas. Then depending on how thick your wood is, you need to add that thickness to the length of the piece of wood because you're overlapping them. We're not miter sawing them and meeting them together. We're overlapping them and you have to compensate for that overlapping length. So let's start gluing these pieces together and I've bought metal, uh, secure 90 degree, um, we call them vinkles, but you'll see when I screw them on to even make it more stable because it is such a big frame. So let's get in here with a little bit of glue. Okay, now you see that I am screwing on the metal right angle brackets to secure the corner. It's not just for security, but this prevents me having to put nails in the side to secure the corners. That leaves my frame where you just see pure wood all the way around the side, and all the hardware to secure is in the back where it's unseen. Okay guys, here's the update. The frame is completely glued together and all of the right angle metal joint security things are screwed in. I can only suggest maybe doing a one complete L, so two pieces together, and then the opposite side complete L completely together before you then join the two L's. Okay, please let me jump back in here. Uh, I'm making all of us dizzy with my cinematography, but what I'm trying to explain is 
because you're overlapping the woods in every corner, you're always gonna have one piece pushing against the other. And when I first glued this corner together and then this corner, by the time I started working on the third and the fourth corner, it was a little bit unstable. I would suggest first connecting this corner, making an L, connecting this corner, making an L, and then when those are secure, then you can join the last two corners. And make sure you are joining your corners exactly in this overlay pattern, just like this. Okay guys, now I've cut these diagonal pieces and I'm mounting to the corners and to the back half of the frame because these are gonna be used to anchor my painting. So remember that my canvas is about three centimeters thick. So that's why I bought boards that were four centimeters and this is almost a centimeter. So then when the painting is mounted to these, the front of the painting will be even with the front of the um, canvas or the frame. The canvas and the frame will be even. So we're just gonna glue this in and then we're gonna secure it with some screws later. Now, I know I said you didn't need a miter saw, and you're like, well, making these pieces are at a 45 degree angle. It's really easy. These are the thinner one centimeter pieces, and you wanna just lay it over the corner of the frame, about three centimeters from the corner, or four to your choice. Just mark it with a pencil, and just go on with a hand saw. It's really easy. Even if it's not perfect, the wood glue is gonna fill everything else in. Okay guys, my little anchors are dried that we've glued on. Of course, like I said, we're going to secure them. Also this side, we're gonna secure them with some kind of screws and a similar um, kind of metal security. But we're gonna do that later because I wanna stain it first. And I would like to stain it similar to the honey color of my floor. So when it's hanging on the wall, I get that color continua continuation from the floor onto the frame. Bought this color, not sure if it's the right color. It looks like it was the right color, but on a piece of extra wood that we cut off, I'm gonna just test it. And um, yeah, if it comes out to be like I want, then I'm gonna stain the back and then I'll see you tomorrow, let that dry overnight, then I'll see you tomorrow when they're ready to secure the back anchor um, parts here and um, then stain the front. So let's get started and see if this stain works. When I first held up this natural wood to the painting, I was also contemplating if the lighter natural wood would also work, but I think it's a little bit too light with the rest of the wood accents in my entryway. So I do want to get a little bit darker. Maybe this one coat is enough, or maybe I need two, but we're, at least it's not too dark. We're on, we're on the right path. So I think tonight, like I said, I'm going to put one coat just on the back let it dry overnight. I think this dries pretty quickly. And then I can probably put another coat if it needs to be darkened. And um, somebody's ringing at my door. So I'm gonna finish what I'm saying really quick. If it needs to be darkened, then I have a couple hours to put a second coat before I flip it over and do the front one. You see, I have stained the back of the frame. I did about three thin coats I rubbed in. I'm liking the color. It is along the same color as the floor. Of course, this is the back, so it doesn't have to be perfect. When I flip it over and stain the front, I'll see if maybe I need to do four coats if I want it a little bit darker. And you see here, I've already screwed in these security metal pieces here, just to give it a little bit more hold. And through these holes, like one there, one there, one there, one there. I'll put in four screws that will go into the wood frame of the canvas and the picture to hold it. And that's how it's gonna be anchored. I'm probably being a little extra, but better be safe than sorry. My painting is rather large and I just wanna be 100% sure that it is secure when it's hanging there on the wall and nothing falls down. Okay, so I'm gonna flip this over do a little bit of light sanding, then I'm gonna stain the front. Okay guys, if you've never stained any kind of wood, it's really easy. You just need a soft cloth, dip it in the stain, 
spread it on a little bit. You either want to work in circular motions or just back and forth, just making sure you're rubbing it good. You don't want to leave any thicker places on the corners or anywhere of the wood because they will dry darker. Of course, you could sand those away later, but it's better to watch out and eliminate them from the beginning so that your stain is smoother. And I do suggest, even if you're staining or painting, a light sanding between each layer makes the perfect finish. So guys, last day working on the frame here. I've decided I think three coats is gonna be enough. So after the second coat, I've just done a light sanding. Just make sure the last coat goes on very evenly, just to even out any spots that may be darker, may have been darker than other spots. You see how I work in circular motions? Just to try to get the stain and all the different grooves and grains of the wood. And then I go back and just wipe off the excess. You just wanna be careful of any excess that maybe will be on your edges to wipe them away like that right there, just so they don't dry any darker. Work it good into the wood, smooth everything out back and forth and stain it. Okay guys, we have the canvas inside the frame. You see how we have the picture turned on his face and then the frame on the back. Now I'm going to screw in the screws here and then the canvas is gonna be secure to the frame. Last one in, yes, okay. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions, please ask them down in the comments. I will answer all questions. Um, yeah, I hope to see you back soon. And as always, yours truly, heart making. Happy framing. Do you go to a framers and pay an exorbitant, exorbitant, a large money, <laughs> pay a large amount, exorbitant, exorbitant, that's the word.